Hey, welcome into Dom Time. Very special show tonight. Talking about a bill, Bill 176 in Harrisburg, that uh, ended up 91 to 91, simply saying that teaching about the Holocaust and other genocides should be mandatory in public and private schools across Pennsylvania. And joining us tonight is Rhonda Fink Whitman, who's a veteran TV and radio personality here in town and someone inspired as the daughter of a Holocaust survivor to write her first novel, and I know how difficult this is to do, 94 Maidens. What would you say is the highlight for you in the book that a reader would find, even if they don't have this personal of a connection with, mm -hmm. what would they find in there that's the highlight to you that you're proud of or the, the thing that people talk about that really grabs them in reading your book? Okay, well, I think everybody can learn something from this book, mm -hmm. whether you know nothing about the Holocaust or you think you know a lot about the Holocaust. Everyone who's right. read it has said, you know, maybe they, they, they knew that, but they didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my kids said, don't call it educational because you know, oh, yeah, there are people who right, think it's a textbook right, and they right, won't want right, to pick it up. Right. It, it reads like, it's a novel and right. it's a story. And um, it reads like a story. But it, uh, you'll learn something in there. I, I have people connecting to it in ways I never imagined. I have an African-American girlfriend who by page 20 was uh, so invested in the characters because she was connecting it to it, you know, with her own roots, her own mm -hmm. family's roots right. in slavery, so she could feel for these characters well, and what exactly they were doing. Exactly what Bill 176 would do. It's exactly. not just exclusively talking about the Holocaust, it's using that as the vehicle, the perfect vehicle to talk about genocide. Right. And, and, all and these so things. what I say about this book is as the daughter of a Holocaust survivor and a longtime mm -hmm. Jewish educator, um, and as a human being, mm -hmm. it wasn't my choice to write this story, it was my responsibility. And that's why I put it out there. To, because the only thing I can fight, do to fight against these deniers uh, and these people who would whitewash history and sanitize it and change it and twist it, uh, like that professor you mentioned right. and the other deniers, uh, the only thing I can do to combat that is education. And so this is my part. This is this, and as a, as a um, as an outgrowth of the book, I have been uh, interviewing survivors and liberators because mm. the clock is ticking, and uh, you know, uh, this talk, is our talk next generation. Talk about the liberators too. They, yeah. the, the the ones that I've interviewed over the years are stunned. Yes. By what they, Eisenhower was when he came upon this. Well, it was just Eisenhower took lots of pictures, didn't he? Yes. Right. So you want to talk about the evidence? When I was at the ITS in Germany, mm -hmm. sixteen miles worth of evidence. The Nazis documented every little thing. They took pictures, they wrote everything down. Mm -hmm. If they put you in a concentration camp and you had lice in your head, they not right. only wrote down how many lice you had, but how big the lice were, small, medium, or large. Everything is documented. We have, um, the, the evidence is enormous. And, and the fact that anybody could say mm -hmm. it didn't happen. And then we have the survivors well, and the and, liberators and, and let's, let's talk who too, took a their bit. own pictures. We have the diminishers. They're a little bit smarter than the deniers. They know outright a book like this, Personal Human Stories. So what they try to do is they'll say, why use the Holocaust though? What's wrong that you have to make that the number one event? There's, and they start to fudge, they start to chip away at the numbers, et cetera. Well, it and was I think the you largest said it earlier, genocide right. you know, that ever took and place they, on the face of the planet. And the systematic nature of it. I think yeah. that's the thing that gets to the roots of how could man do this? How could people, this culture, systematically Dumb. turn themselves off and do this? We, we went to Medanik, which is right. a, a death camp in, um, right outside of Lublin, Poland. And there, they this, their system of I don't want to go into details, but their system of killing was mm. uh, was just in the beginning stages. Then we went to Auschwitz. By the time we got to Auschwitz, they had mastered extermination because they figured out more efficient ways mm. to kill people instead of the Zyklon B coming falling from the right. ceiling and just landing on shoulders. It took too long. It wasn't efficient enough. They they built these pillars with these corkscrew type things inside that, that ground around so that the poison was more evenly dispersed. Exactly. People don't know about this. You go there, you see it for yourself. Yeah, it is It is something everybody should see. And also everybody should pick up a copy of 94 Maidens. Rhonda, thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Tom. I share your passion on this. More shows, more on this. Thank Get you. a copy of her book. It's a great read and a great way to connect with this. Coming up, why my one minute, and I go back 68 years ago tonight, on Dom Time. Hey, welcome back to Dom Time. 68 years ago today, 
The nuclear age dawned, at least in the sense of Harry Truman making the decision, the correct decision, I think, to drop the first atomic weapon on Hiroshima. A guy called my radio show today and made a good point about the morality of this and the necessity of this, a day that we commemorate today, 68 years later, that the second bomb, the bomb that was dropped in Nagasaki, was the thing that gives us justification for the first bomb because it indicated how implacable the Japanese were. And if you're alive today, you may be alive, I may be alive, because our dads or granddads were not sent to invade the homeland of Japan, in which we would have had a million casualties. Thanks for joining us tonight on a very special Dom Time. Please join us tomorrow night at 7 p.m. right here on Dom Time.